back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. What's going on, everyone? It's Nina Infinity. Welcome to my channel on this Friday. It's Good Friday. It's Good News Day. And I'm excited to be here to report some much needed good news because I know we could all really use it. I know I could because the world just seems to be just uh, getting more intense by the minute and every day. But there's always good things going on, too. And that's what I do on the show. I try to balance out the world and remind you that there's still good things happening. There's still good humans, positivity, the birds chirping, you know, all of the good stuff, turtles and, you know, tur tur turtles. <laughs> all of the good things that uh, comes with spring and rejuvenation and all of the stuff. And today's actually Good Friday, the actual Good Friday. Uh, which the Christians, uh, I guess, coined <laughs> in a way. Uh, so happy Easter to everybody uh, who celebrates Easter, uh, all the Christians um, in, in the chat. Uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for being here so we can start it off on a positive note because that's what it's all about. What's going on, Hiker Emoji? How you doing over on Rumble? Uh, just a reminder that we are live on Rumble as well as uh, YouTube and X, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. Because we, I want to bring good news to everyone wherever they are. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone has access to this show because uh, we just need good positive energy going everywhere uh, at the same time. Hmm. What's going on, Cunning Stunt? Patrick McCarty's here. Hello. Uh, he says, I love turtles. So do I, man. So do I. Shane G, how you doing? Saw one, Dan A. Uncle Martin's in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, Philip? Hey, everybody is in the house. Hey, do you guys have like Easter plans, Easter weekend plans? Uh, by the way, make sure you smash the like, share the stream, all that good stuff, because we do have a, a lot of good, uh, good things going on today. Let's, uh, Let's start the show. Uh, we have, uh, well, this isn't quite archaeology news, but it's definitely something because things have been found underground. <laughs> and uh, that's always fun. So here is, a, here is a bit of interesting news here. Hopefully I can say all the words right. Um, despite faulty metal detector, treasure hunter on Earth's largest gold nugget ever found in England. Wow. Um, that's, that's quite a feat. There's the golden nugget. Well, it's golden nuggety. Um, <laughs> despite having a, a faulty metal detector and having to use an old backup, a treasure hunter discovered the largest gold nugget ever found in England. Richard Brock traveled uh, and traveled three and a half hours from his home in Somerset to join an organized expedition on farmland in the uh, Shropshire, Shropshire, Shropshire Hills, Shropshire, Shropshire. Anyways, at this place. Upon arrival, he found that he had a, dif a difficulty with his detecting device and had to resort to uh, using a dodgy older machine that was not even working properly. But minutes later, the 67-year-old who had been metal detecting for 35 years discovered the biggest find of his life, unearthing a gold nugget weighing 64.8 grams. That's, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. I actually arrived about an hour late thinking I'd miss the, <laughs> miss the action said the father of four, who's been detecting since 1989. Uh, that's so funny, you know, because they usually say that, you know, early bird gets the worm kind of thing. Um, and now this dude arrived late and had broken equipment, but ended up finding this thing. Um, so, you know, against all odds, against all odds, I guess it was just meant to be. Um, everyone... 
everyone there had all the, all this up to date kit, and I've and I've blown up with uh, uh with three old machines, and one of them broke down there and then. Wow! After only twenty minutes of scanning the ground with this backup detector that had fading screen display, I found this nugget buried about five or six inches down in the ground. There it is. Wow. Now you can see it better now because in this one, you can't really see like how, because you, you got to be able to like, you know, compare to the surroundings. So now you can see how big it actually was because it's, it's been placed in near the dirt. Wow. That's, that's, that's a big nugget. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was, uh, I uh, I was perhaps a bit too honest and started showing people. And then all of a sudden I had swarms of other detectors scanning the same area. Well, of course that would happen. They'd be like, I want to discover a gold nugget. Uh, the machine I, the, the machine I was using was pretty much kaput and only half working. It just goes to show that it doesn't really matter what equipment you use or you're just lucky. I mean, that's just, that, that just sounds really like a lot of luck. If you're walking over the fine and are alert enough to uh, what might be lurking underneath this soil, that might make all the difference. I mean, that's just experience, too. I mean, this dude's been doing this for 35 years, so that's just experience. I couldn't uh, look for anything else as I had the landowner, the organizer of the dig, and every other detector is around me trying to get a look at this nugget. Just what a gold nugget was uh, <laughs> doing in uh, Shropshire Hills. Uh, near uh, much when Wenlock. Wow, these these words uh, remain somewhat of a mystery. Although the area is believed to have been an old track or road with railway railway lines uh, running through, containing stone likely distributed from Wales, a, a county known to be rich in gold. Uh, again, here's another uh, little picture showing how big it actually was. Wow, that's cool. Uh, the only examples of gold nuggets bigger than Richards in Britain have been found in either Wales or Scotland. The last one, which claimed uh, which claimed to be bigger than in, uh, bigger in England, was 54 grams of minus 64.8 grams. So we're uh, pretty confident this is the biggest found in, in, on English soil. It's quite incredibly uh, incredible, really. Uh, named Heroes Nuggets, a metal lump is being sold uh, by Moloch Jones auctioneers in the online auction that runs until April 1st, which they hope will fetch tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, well, pounds, I guess. Uh, and in a generous uh, gesture, Richard says uh, he's going to sp uh, split the uh, proceeds with the landowner. So, wow, that's really nice of him. Um, and there you go. The, one of the biggest gold nuggets ever found in England. That's pretty cool. I want a metal detector. I think I think that's really fun. <laughs> uh, you keep adding extra syllables to Shropshire. Oops. Spectral Citizen, what's going on? It's been a minute since I've seen you. Just skipped a five memberships to the chat. Thank you so very much for that, sir. Hello. Good to see you. David Morris is here too for 10 and says, take my money. Thank you, sir. I will. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Happy Easter to you. Um, my goodness. Uh, hello, TD. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, apparently he's going to. He's going to split the uh, proceeds with the landowner, which is very nice of him. It's a very nice thing to do. So, yeah, if you got a membership from uh, from the chat today, it's from Spectral Citizen. Make sure you say thank you. Thank you to Spectral. Uh, so there we go. That was the first bit of news. Um, and then there is this, uh, there's this story here, which I thought was very sweet. Uh, I like it because I like nature and I like fairies and I like imagination and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> so I thought this was really cool. 
here is the uh, here is this news here. She wanted her son with autism to explore nature, so she created a whimsical fairy uh, fairy forest trail, uh, which I think is really really cool. What a cool idea! This is the woman that thought of the idea, and that's her son. Uh, and we're going to just watch the story here because it was really cool. So here we go. Studies show taking a walk in nature can have positive impacts on your health. But wait, what was that? And that are those fairy homes nestled into the trees and logs of a New Jersey forest? They are fairy homes scattered across the Rawway Trail in Milburn South Mountain Reservation. It's become known as the Fairy Trail for obvious reasons. I love but that. But where did these whimsical masterpieces come from? So the Fairy Trail was started over 10 years ago um, by a woman named Therese who started the trail to encourage her son to be more out in the forest. Uh, Good for son her. Autism, and she wanted a safe environment for him to be able to explore and have more freedom. Therese and her son moved out of the area but their fairy trail legacy lives on. Volunteers now create whimsical fairy homes. Look how pretty and that Beth is. And Kelly and Julie Gould are the makers and keepers of the trail. Uh, I was introduced to the trail during the pandemic. I have two little boys and I needed a place just to get out of the house, but some place that That's we could awesome. go and just breathe fresh air and, and enjoy, and I fell in love with it. I'm actually a school administrator, and we gravitated towards the fairy trail with some of the pre-K children. I caught the fever, I caught the magic, and just became the fairy trail builder, just jumped right into it to help here and there. But with Therese leaving, there's no stewards of the trail to keep it up. Aww, and if, if we can't that. find anybody, then it's just going to kind of go back into nature. All of the houses are made out of natural elements and colors, so they fit right into the forest. Visitors of the fairy trail can spend hours looking for the nearly 100 tiny homes tucked into the nooks and crannies of the forest. Kids try and see the fairies, and sometimes they're convinced they have. If it's a night where, you, where the moon is shining, fairies we don't always see them they're shy they you know they let julie and i see them once in a while <laughs> really you should see when they ride on the backs of the chipmunks sometimes they swing on the leaves after the rain you'll see them oh, i love how this one's so imaginative we let the kids know it's okay if you don't see them because during the day there's so much foot traffic so the fairies try to hide away so that's why they love the camouflage as much as possible so it keeps them safe and cozy if they don't it was still a day well spent out in nature. Yeah. It's a great place to clear your head and to explore and have that childhood wonderment. And it's in for kids of all ages. Fairies might not be I real, definitely go. but this trail <laughs> is certainly magical. That's really cool. I love that. Um, you know, this is what it, what it means to have an impact on your community and like wh where you are. So that woman who started this probably didn't really think about how it's going to affect other people. She did it for her son, the love of a mother, right? But it also ended up being something really incredible. And now so many people get the benefits of it. And that's why creativity is so important because no matter what, at the end of the day, you're going to be affecting the people around you in a positive way. And that's that's always the, the best outcome, right? Uh, so all these kids now that are enjoying this forest because that woman decided to do something for her son is just uh, really, really cool. I love that. I love that kind of positive attitude and um, just like wanting to put something forward, you know, for everybody to enjoy, uh, I think is a wonderful thing. Um, let me get this uh, rumble rant here from none other than Mr. Braz Monkey. Mr. Braz Monkey's here. Hello, everybody. Says good, <laughs> good, happy, good Friday, and then toast me with the Japan, for the Japan fun. Thank you so much. Uh, toasting you with uh, some iced coffee here. Hmm, very good. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Braz Monkey. Appreciate you very much. Um, and also, in the same vein here, we got um, Yeezy. Yeezy? Oh, wait. Also pronounce Easy. Easy. Hello, Easy. Hello. Thank you for the $15. Says, hi, Nina. What are you most looking forward to seeing when you visit Japan? Uh, easy. Thank you. Um, what a good question. I, well, I've always wanted to go. It's always been my, on my bucket list because 
Um, I'm a huge anime fan, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so I definitely want to go to a few places. Obviously, I want to visit Tokyo because I feel like Tokyo is a, you know, a very like it's it's the main place um, in Japan that people want to go to. But I don't know, if, like, I don't want to stay there the whole time. So, like, I definitely want to go to, like, the anime se central place. I, f I forget where that is. I think it might be in Kyoto. Uh, so I definitely want to go there. Depending on the time of year I go, I would love to, I mean, obviously, I would love to visit, like, in the spring where I could see the sakura blossoms. But I think that's the most expensive time to go. So I don't know if I'll get to go then. Um, but other places that I would love to visit is like just small towns and temples. And I would love to go to um, a uh, like a hot springs. Uh, I would love to just visit, honestly, like all the cultural places. I would really like to see the little um, just like Japanese villages and just things like that. Like I want to travel through Japan and not just visit the main main city centers, but I would love to see uh, all the temples and all the historical places. I love history. So it would definitely be something that I would love to see is a lot of history in Japan. Yes, I absolutely would love to see Godzilla. I mean, that would be, I mean, that would be so, so amazing to see Godzilla. Uh, yes, I think that's what it's called. Akihabara district or whatever. Um, I think that's what it's called, but, uh, yeah. So any, on, honestly, I just want to visit it and see what happens and see where life takes me and where the adventure takes me. Kyoto as well. Yeah. And like, I've, I've heard a lot about Kyoto. I would really love to visit there. Um, I, I would love to just see, you know, Mount Fuji from the distance. I wouldn't go to like actual Mount Fuji, uh, but just like the, the, all, all of it, all of it. I've been such a weeb all my life and I just love Japan so much. So I think it would be really wonderful to visit all of the, all of the things. Uh, and of course, have sushi and ramen and uh, sake and all the good food there and just, uh, just everything. Just enjoy it. Um, go to the cat cafes with all the little girls, <laughs> like the, all the cute little kawaii girls. <laughs> uh, and I'll be like, kawaii. <laughs> just totally weave out, you know. Um, those those things. Uh, I know I, it might not mean to, stuff to a lot of people, but it, it would mean a lot to me because I love I love that place. Uh, Steel Leg, Steel Leg is here. Thank you so much for the 14 month member message. Hello. It says thanks for all the kindness and support this week has been really good and bad. Can't tell how much it means to me that everyone's nice and kind words help. Oh, well, they do always help. Kind Kindness always does help. I'm sorry it's been a difficult week as well as good. I mean, that's that's life usually, like up and down. Um, so it's uh it's it's tough. It can be tough, but I you, we're always here for you, Steel Leg. We're always here for you. Um, and uh follows it up with a four four ninety nine uh super chat. Thank you. It says my knee and stump are recovering, but my old laptop died. But my mom helped me get and got me a new one, and my internet goes out this morning. Just came back. Oh, well, I saw you post about the fact that your mom got you the new laptop, and that one looks really, really good, man. So, like, you know, win, win, mom, win, mom, win. Uh, obviously, that's amazing. What a great gift for her to give you, and uh, that's really like, you know, just moms are the best. You know, hi, mom, if you're watching, love you. <laughs> Um, moms are the best. I uh, thank you, Steel Leg. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Japan is a goal for any anime fan. It's been I've been a lifelong anime fan. It's been literally since I mean the very first movie I ever saw in the theater was an anime. It was called Unico in Iran. So I mean I've just like my entire life has been so affected. And, and influenced by by anime and all the you know beautiful culture that Japan has to offer. Um, you guys want to know the weirdest thing? I the when I was in Iran, um, Iran had like a really interesting relationship with uh, Japan. So even though like the West stuff was totally banned, and by the West I mean Hollywood stuff. Like that's why you guys have heard my 
my stories about, uh, you know, having to get the, the Disney movies from the, the movie guy that would come over to the house with a suitcase. Um, Japan stuff was not so bad. So a lot of the stuff that I would get to see was all like Japanese anime and series movies, like all sorts of obviously Akira Kurosawa stuff, like a lot of movies. Um, and then I remember one of the first kind of like, um, I guess soap opera, it wasn't really a soap opera, but it was like a really dramatic um, a, a dramatic like series. It was Japanese. And I watched that when I was a kid and it was called Oshin. And I remember this because uh, it was like such an impactful story to me. And it was about this woman that uh, owned like a grocery chain in, in Japan. And then I remember like I looked it up later and I found out that this person was real and actually does own like the biggest, largest Japanese um, chain in uh, in Japan. Like it was like based on her real life story. And it was really, really cool. Like I was like, I can't believe I actually saw this, this, um, this series. I think it was called Oshin, but it was about like her story and her journey and how she became this like the most one of the most successful people in in all of uh, Japan. And she was like a woman and everything. And it was really cool because we were being shown this in Iran. And I was like, how is that? Like, that's so weird. They don't really respect women all that much here. But they're like, see, women can be powerful and whatever. <laughs> but it was about this this show. Um, and it really influenced me. Uh, so it was a, I don't know if you guys know at all what I'm talking about. But uh, it was a really cool show. It was really cool. Have I read Perso uh, Purse Police? No, I have not read Purse Police. How is it? Have you read it? Braz Monkey says, love that show. You've seen it? You know what I'm talking about? It was really cool. I think it's this one. Hold on. I think I found it. I'm going to show you guys what this is. It was really cool. I remember it was a really influential show when I was growing up. There it is. Oshin. I remember this lady. This was this was a big deal when I was growing up. I remember like everyone in my family was like, we need to, we need to see what happens with Oshin next because it was a, like a weekly show. It was a big deal. It was a big, big deal when I was growing up. Very cool stuff. Wow, I'm, I'm starting to feel real nostalgic right now. See, now you know how much of a weeb I actually am, Braz Monkey. Like, people don't believe me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've been, like, literally raised by J Japanese culture for so long. <laughs> it's really affected me in my life in, in the best way possible. Uh, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't be who I am today without the Japanese culture. It's, it's pretty wonderful. Um, okay. Let's go on with the next story. This story is, um, uh, Asian approved. <laughs> uh, all right, next story. And this one is really silly and weird, but I liked it. So I'm like, you know what? Let, let's talk about this because it's just funny. This is just funny. Um, so it says couple orders a cake replica of their dog, but it was so realistic they couldn't cut it. Here's the picture of the dog cake. Um, let me let me blow this up a little bit so you guys, you guys can see it better. So this is the actual dog here. And this is the cake. My goodness, the, the cake. The, dude, that is realistic. That, that, that is very realistic. This, this picture, that's next level. Like, oh my God. 
Um, a couple who ordered a cake replica of their dog found that it was so realistic they couldn't bring themselves to cut it. Anna Rallaton and Chris uh, Smowinton, uh, <laughs> Smowinton? Uh, bought an edible version of their pet Arthur for a joint birthday celebration. But when the life-size Whippet uh, dessert <laughs> arrived, the English pair described it as uncanny and had, a, had to get someone else <laughs> to take the knife to it. It was literally the same, same size and weight as my dog, twice the size of what I thought it was going to be, recalls Anna. It came in this genuinely ridiculously huge, uh, ridiculous huge box. And I was uh, thinking, my God, what have I done? <laughs> Can you imagine? The impressive cake was made by designers at the cake shop. We're going to take a look at this cake shop in the Oxford uh, co uh, covered market. So, wow, if you guys are near that area, you should definitely pay this place a visit, especially if you have a party coming up or something. Sounds like they do really great cakes. Here he is uh, with the eyeball of the dog. He's just like, oh, my God, I'm eating my dog's eye. Uh, I have ordered I've ordered cakes from them before, and they're massive legends who enjoy doing non-standard cakes. The cake was said to be uh, uh, set to feed 30 to 40 people. And Anna sent over various images of her beloved eight year old pooch. But she presumed it would be just a normal cake size. It was so shockingly realistic. There's the cake uh, having been eaten and all the discarded the parts. Like these are the, the paws and the tails and stuff. Uh, someone else had to cut up the face uh, that I was not down for. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. There's no word about whether Arthur got a taste of his own doppelganger desserts. So there you go. Uh, very silly. I liked it just because it's so silly. <laughs> I like silly articles like this. Um, this is, um, let's go to the cake store here. Maybe they have more pictures of their, uh, cool desserts that they've built. Let's see. This is the cake shop. Uh, so there we go. Let's see. This is our story. Do they have like a, uh, no, that's produce. Do they have like pictures of their cakes? I want to, I want to see more pictures of these uh dog like <laughs> any any similar images i want to see their other work see that's this is bad marketing guys like on these people on their website you need to put pictures of your amazing desserts that you've built like that dog that should be on here am i right is that not bad marketing like imagine you guys are like looking to make a cake like that and then you come on these guys' website and then you see that cake it'd be like yeah i i'm gonna order i'm gonna order that where's your pictures of your cakes i don't see anything ask them for a marketing job well apparently uh they should be hiring for somebody i mean we should just start mass emailing them <laughs> like, hey, I noticed your website kind of <laughs> you need pictures of your cakes. I think I can help you with that. <laughs> need more caffeine. Today's definitely one. Today's like a cloudy day in Cancun. And it feels like, like whenever it's like a really weird and cloudy day, like it feels kind of. Like when the sun is not like intensely in your face, it feels really like mellow. Just feels, it feels extra mellow today. So I need more caffeine than usual. It, that literally would be me. Why don't you have pictures? Like, look, pictures, pictures say a thousand words, right? So imagine you had like all these funky cakes you've made. You should have pictures of all of them. And be like, hey, like we do specialty cakes. I mean, it doesn't have to be like adult oriented cakes. Like that dog cake was really cool. If you do specialty cakes, you should put that out there. I mean, imagine it's like, I mean, I don't, I'm sure you guys, if you if you know who Anna, that Star Wars girl is, you you've heard her wedding cake story by now. So imagine if you like, you know had access to a bakery like this that actually does it right. 
it would be pretty cool. It would be pretty cool. Well, they should have a catalog. Did they? I didn't see the catalog. Our story, news and events become a traitor. 250th anniversary. 250th anniversary? How is that even possible? This, this place is 250 years old. What? That's insane. So they, they were like making cakes for the queen. And like the king. <laughs> that's that's wild. It's like imagine like taking the cake to like the king's hall. Like these guys used to like actually work for the king. That Star Wars girl story needs, should be a lesson. It, exactly. You, we take lessons from all around us. I mean, it literally, it says 250 year anniversary. I, this is, this is crazy. Look, 250 year anniversary. We've been continuing operating market for 250 years. That's a long time. <laughs> is America even that old? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, a tulip cake would have made Anna crazy. Can you imagine? I mean, I was thinking about like, what if I got a Yuki cake? I mean, I don't think I could eat it. I, I don't think I could eat it either. Canada sure isn't. <laughs> we used to still be part of the Queensland uh, when that when that bakery was invented. If they've been around for 250 years, I think they're good in the marketing department. You know what? You know what? I take it back. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Nomad over on Rumble says the U.S. is 248 years old. <laughs> Bakery Marketplace is 250 years old. It's two years. <laughs> it's two years older than America. <laughs> That's funny. I'm cracking up over this. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not as funny to other people, but I thought that that was funny. Um, okay. Next story. And this is the highlighted story. Um, the, the highlighted story today is about a hero. Um, you know, and heroes, <clears throat> not, not, they don't all wear capes. We know this. Uh, and this time the hero is a uh, is a bus driver. Hail to the bus driver, bus driver, bus driver. Hail to the bus driver, bus driver. Woman, because it's a woman in this case. Hero bus driver saves nine kids before school bus goes up in flames. What an actual nightmare. I was all caught on tape. Here we go. We're going to watch the story. Now to the hero school bus driver who saved the kids on her bus just in time, just before the bus went up in flames. The close call all caught on camera. Gia Benitez has that story for us. Good morning, Gia. Good morning, wow. Robin. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, the incredible woman you're about to meet has been a school bus driver for just a few years, and she was just about to make her fifth stop when the unthinkable happened and a hero was born. Take a look. This is like her origin I put my story. Hood on. I have a child, so I thought about them kids like it was my own child. A mother's instinct. That's what Kia Rusev credits with saving her own life and the lives of the nine kids she was driving on this bus. Thank before God it went she up was in there. Flames. The sign of reports of a school bus on fire. We just sat here to this location. A um, couple of the kids want to get checked out. That's crazy. We put our lives. That's what I've been thinking about. Like, it's like every time I look at the pictures, it's like, wow, my feet was the first thing that caught on fire. That's the hero's actions all caught on camera. The 28-year-old says she first knew something was off when the bus started losing power. 
the bus started acting crazy and started jerking and going real, real soon. That's terrifying. As she pulls over, a bystander runs and lets her know that flames another are hero, from by the way, the bus. Kia quickly gathering the group of kindergarten through eighth grade students and leading them off and away from the bus. I just had to stay calm for the kids because they was crying and running up the street and I had to get them together. Like, you know, make sure they were kids. Within moments of her making sure everyone was off, the entire front of the bus was engulfed. Kia's employer calling her actions courage on wheels. Yeah, I was just glad that I was being a hero to the kids and being a hero to myself by I mean, getting them off wild. the bus real quickly. And she did. Kia says that she's still really shaken up about the whole thing and says she probably won't go back to driving school buses. I can see why. Now, but no doubt about it, that maternal hero inside mm. isn't going away anytime soon. But yeah. also that bystander who alerted yes. her to that. Yes. The bystander's from under the also bus. a hero. Now stay calm. Everybody stay calm. Yep. All right. Thanks so much for that. Gio? Uh, that, is, that is incredible. What a crazy story. And I mean, she stepped up and so did that bystander. Thank God that she was there. They were both there to to save those kids because this could have been a really tragic uh, outcome. Uh, now, people are wondering why the bus caught on fire. I don't actually know because they didn't say in this article unless it's been updated um, it didn't say why the bus caught on fire. It's just, I guess it was just a, I don't know, a faulty old bus. Um, yeah, because it doesn't really state why. I can see why they wouldn't want to state why. Um, you know, there's a lot of issues right now going on with funding and things like that in the States, which is not, not very good. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, I think that the importance of this story is that this person stepped up. And I don't really want to take away from that, you know? Um, I mean, they definitely should be making sure that these buses are much more safe to drive in. I mean, this is just ridiculous. If I was one of those parents, I would be upset that my kid was uh, was placed in a bus like that. <laughs> okay. You cracked me up, Nick. <laughs> that bus was 250 years old. I, I mean, really, like, what is going on with that bus? 200 Watt Studios is here saying hail and happy Good Friday, Nina. Hello. Happy actual Good Friday to 200 Watt Studios. Happy Easter. I hope, uh, I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, I mean, what city is this? Uh, let me check. It was in, where did it say? A bus driver for community uh, in Nor New Orleans. It was New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. That's where it was. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> 200 watts got, uh, studios coming in with the punnies. Or two says, uh, because it was combustible. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> oh, boy. It's just, uh, it's not good to have school buses catch on fire. Uh, but that woman's motherly instinct kicked in, and thank God it did. Uh, speaking of motherly instincts, here's a video of a mama beaver <laughs> chasing down her kid. This is hilarious. <laughs> like I didn't allow you I didn't say you could come in here what did I tell you what did I tell you you need to do your homework before you go swimming I said no
This mama beaver is like. <laughs> what did I just say? What 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 did I just say? You're not allowed to go swimming after you eat. <laughs> get back, get back to your room. I love it. He's like, she's like, Gary. <laughs> Oh, so too cute. Um, mama knows best. Mama knows best. Uh, <laughs> beavers and time out. <laughs> Clean up your room, kiddo. Uh, some of the comments uh, on this thread have been, oh, you finished tidying up your den already? Okay, well, let's go and have a little look, shall shall we? One person commented, I told you no swimming for 30 minutes after you ate. Now back in the table, young man. Another one joked. Uh, so lots of funny comments on there. That was funny. Finish your vegetables. <laughs> uh, mama, don't preach. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Um, next story. This is uh this is uh I, I I love this story. I thought this was a really cool story. Um <clears throat> because it's just like the power again, it's it's about the power of impact that you can have on your community and and taking like you know, taking life in your own hands and trying to give back. Uh I think this is another great example of it, and I love it. Uh, it says, in the heart of Harlem, Grandma's Place shines an uplifting oasis for children. Uh, so this is a really cool story here uh, of this lady. Oh, wow. Yes, 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 yes. Grandma's Place is the toy store and the toys that I never had as a child. When I was a kid, Aww. my mother gave us fruit. And 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 um, clothing. Oh. And I always wanted toys. So my first toy, I got it. I think we were all like that to some extent. Like when you're always like, you know, for Christmas or something, you would always get clothes or like whatever holiday you celebrate, you would get clothes, and you'd be like, I just want some toys, man. Like where are my toys at? You get some socks. <laughs> you're like, where, where are my toys? I'm eight. G.I. Joe when I was 22 years old. Oh, that's so cool, by the way. Like her first toy was G.I. Joe. I always wanted toys. So my first toy, I got a G.I. Joe when I was 22 years old after I worked a job. 22. But no kid should not be without a toy or a book. She's right. I was a teacher for a while. And when I couldn't be a teacher anymore, I opened grandma's place and the kids are still coming in and I'm still doing what I'm doing my Aww. life's work. It's my passion. Love that. I lived next door and I had an opportunity for having a laundromat or a fish and chips joint here. And I said, what we need is a literacy center. My, my children, awesome. my second grade children, the ones that were read to are doing so much better the ones that don't She's have parents right. that read to them, and not doing what we need a literacy center. So when I saw this store, I talked to the man and got Cora Walker was retiring. She was a lawyer. She gave me her barrister's tables, her bookcases and everything. And I opened the literacy center here for, Good for her. generational literacy. Um, find the, um, the, um, the alphabet book, the ball, you know, oh, okay. to whom much is given, much is expected. And I have lived a blessed life. Good for her. God has been very good to me. God gave me the brownstone that I'm living in. 
God allowed me to go to school, open enrollment came along and I was allowed to go to college. I won a Ford Foundation scholarship, got my master's wow. at Teachers College. I had to be here for the community. So God must have wanted me to be a teacher. So here I am, I was a teacher for a while. And when I couldn't be a teacher anymore, I opened grandma's place and the kids are still coming in and I'm still doing what I'm doing. My what an incredible work. woman. It's my passion. And I'm an extension of the community because when I was a little kid, eight, I lived eight, eight blocks down and wow. everybody on the block were my babysitters and took care of me because my mom had three jobs. So takes a I village. wasn't allowed off the block and all of the businesses were my parents and I would go in and out of the barbershop, <laughs> the beauty parlor, the pool hall, the luncheonette, and they all took care of me. So I'm now playing it forward. Wow. I am now grandma's face. The kids She's come lived in, a life. calls me grandma. That's why I named the place grandma. Because my granddaughter named the store and she was calling me grandma and the kids came in and they thought the name of the store was grandma's place. Oh, what a, what a great story, right? I mean, this is one of those stories. I'm telling you, this is one of those stories. This is, this is what makes the world a great place because of people like her that are constantly giving back. And, you know, a lot of them go unnoticed. A lot of them go unnoticed. And I just love the fact that this woman, um, you know, has stayed in the community. She was a teacher. And when she couldn't do it anymore, she opened up this learning center because, oh, my God, books are so important. Reading and books are so important. You know, as much as uh, the Japanese culture affected my life and, you know, who I am. Uh, so did books and reading. And it's just so, so important for every kid to have access to books and toys. Um, and I'm I'm just, uh, I'm in awe of people like her that step up and do certain stuff like this. Um, really, really powerful. It's, it's powerful. Um, two in a one studios. You're awesome. Thank you for the five dollars. Is that sitcom that lasted three episodes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, also for another five dollars, that was a good lesson. Never let your beaver get uh, get wet alone. Use the buddy system. Oh my god! Wow, that 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 escalated quickly. Um, my goodness. You hey, phrasing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, what's up, Teresa? How you doing? Good to see you. Happy Easter, my friend. Happy Good Friday. Um, uh, next story. This is about um, a doggy rescue. I got to tell you, my heart like sank with the story because I was like, oh, look at that dog's face. Like, she, see, she's so sad. But I mean, everything turned out fine. So don't worry. Everything is fine. But she was so sad. Um, New Jersey firefighters saved dog trapped in tire. Look at this, that face. Oh, my God. Oh, look at, look at, oh, the poor doggy. Poor doggy. I feel so bad for him. What's in here? Oh no, I can't get out. <laughs> oh no. Uh, in a heartwarming display of community spirit and swift action, the Frank uh, Franklinville Volunteer Fire Company. Uh, it's it's even more amazing that they're all volunteers. Uh, came to the rescue of a, of a beloved furry resident, Daisy the dog, who found herself in a tight spot, quite literally. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I misgendered you, little. Little girl, little puffers. Uh, the saga began when Daisy, a cherished member of the Fre uh, Frankenville community, managed to get her head, head wedged inside the rim of a tire at her home. Lieutenant Brandon Bolt told Philadelphia Inquirer that the crew first used dish soap and water but couldn't free the dog, who was pretty stuck in there. They then tried vegetable oil, and then, and when that didn't work, they put plastic wrap around her neck, hoping the oil and soap would make it slippery enough for her to slide out, uh, slide down. Uh, there they are uh, trying to get this poor dog out. 
Uh, when that failed, Volt remembered uh, that he had plasma cutters at home. They're used for cutting steel and metal. Uh, and he knew a tire would be no match for the machine. The crew carefully loaded Daisy into the uh, into the fire truck and set off for Volp garage, Volp's garage where they skillfully and successfully extracted the tire, freeing Daisy from her confinement. There's the, the tire, the thing that they got rid of, and uh, poor dog is free now. Um, in a statement on social media, the department expressed their gratitude to everyone involved in the successful rescue mission, emphasizing the unwavering commitment they bring to the uh, to every call for assistance. This is the dedication of uh, and commitment you can expect from the FVFC each time we respond to a call. We are grateful to everyone who responded today to help Daisy, the department said. Well, thank God. Uh, they were able to help this poor doggy. Oh, that's so sad. Poor dog. Uh, I did just see some. I did just see some clickbait that I'm going to click on. Oh man, I can't show it to you guys because it's like the the viral hog video. So I can't show it to you because I'll get claimed. Um, but I can maybe just link it later or something. Um, poor, poor dog. Poor dog. Uh, Psychotic Mongoose, thank you for gifting one membership to the chat. That is so kind of you. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, by the way, guys, please make sure you do smash the like and share the stream if you haven't done so already. It really helps. Um, and also after the show, if you leave a comment, uh, that would be amazing because it shows the algorithm that you're enjoying this content. Um, oh. Hiker Emoji over on Rumble says... If anyone's looking for good news movies, uh, movie recommendations, I saw the Cokeville Miracle last night. Cried my eyes out. New favorite movie. Wow. I'm going to have to look, look this up. I've never even heard about it. Let's see. It's a 2015 film. Wow. It says, in 1989, a group of children held hostage in their school narrated a story of a miracle in Cokeville Town, which makes the adults doubtful about it. That's the premise of the story. Okay. Okay. All right. Good to know. I watched a very, very, very emotional movie last night, too. Um, it was based on a true story. It's a new one with Alan Rickton, uh, the guy that played... Um, or Alec Rickson, the guy that plays uh, Reacher. And uh, it was really emotional. I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be that emotional, but it was. Um, and it's called uh, Ordinary Angels. Um, and Ordinary Angels is actually based on a true story, uh, which was, like, honestly, it was really wild. It's something, like, that would be an infinite hope story. Like, it was definitely something that I was like, wow, this that I can't believe this person did that. Uh, and the premise is a struggling hairdresser finds a renewed sense of purpose when she meets a widowed father working hard to care for his two daughters with his youngest critically ill and waiting for a liver transplant. The fierce woman single-handedly rallies an entire community to help. So it was, like, about this woman's story who has um basically like she has a an a, addiction problem and um it was it was really crazy like i mean i can't believe she did she did that and it was it was a true story um so it was kind of like really impactful it was very impactful emotional so it was boring <laughs> well i mean it's you know it's a drama it's it's slow uh, but it was like definitely, you know, I wouldn't, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would say 
boring, but it's like it makes you if you if you have if you have if you're in touch with your emotions, you'll probably cry. Let's just say that. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, Ian so for thank you so much for the 25 says dog gets headstock. Oh man gets headstock. LOL. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That reminds me of like the Simpsons. I'm gonna have to saw your arms off. They'll grow back, right? Oh yeah. Woo. <laughs> Wasn't that the perfect clip for this? I mean, mind you, this that was his arm or like no, not his head. <laughs> But still, that was one of my favorite scenes in The Simpsons. Oh, man. Old Simpsons. It's so good. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Thank you so much for the 25. And you're totally right. It did work well, right? That was great. Uh, B. Marche, what's up? Thank you for the 20. He says, hi, I was going to see, but drunk 3 PO spoiled on Car uh, Carrie Smith's channel. Um, What, Ordinary Angels? I mean, but technically, it's a true story, so you can go read it if you want. <laughs> and that was spoiled already. Um, How dare he? This is, uh, this is, um, are you talking about Ordinary Angels, or are you talking about the other movie? That uh, the last person talked about, Hacker Emoji talked about um, the Cokeville miracle. Um, how dare drunk 3PO? This is for drunk 3PO. How dare you? With the spoilers, man, come on. It was good though. Yarnwich, hello Yarnwich says for four ninety nine. Able unable to stay, but wanted to say hi real quick. Much love to y'all. Oh, hello and thank you for stopping by. I I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Um, and speaking of heroes, here's local hero. Hi, just gifted ten memberships to the chat. Thank you so much, local hero. My goodness. So if you guys just. Received a membership. You know who to thank. Local hero. Thank you so much. So appreciate it. Um, I will be playing more video games soon. Probably after the show. Uh, local hero also. I, I think I saw a comment you made about me wanting to or you wanting me to play the Terminator game. And that new, this new Helldivers game definitely has like a Terminator-ish uh, section where you're like <laughs> killing all the robots. <laughs> and that is, is, pretty, is pretty close. But I, I wouldn't mind playing that Terminator game either. So maybe one day I'll play that. Like maybe, maybe after Helldivers becomes a little boring, maybe we'll go kill some more Terminators. So... Always, always an option. Always looking for new options of video games anyway. So good to know that that's uh, something you would watch. Uh, and again, thank you so much for the memberships. Hey, what's going on? Uh, we got an X viewer over here. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, the next story is really cute. Um, and it's just, um, yeah, I know, I know, Boosh. I, I know I got to finish Black Flag too. Yarg, I know. I really want to as well. That's the funny part. But now I'm, I'm like well into Helldivers now. And there's only so much time that you can, that you can play these games. Um, so it's just like, oh, like I want to play. I want to play so bad. Um, Oh, uh, B. Marte, thank you for the 10. Says, Ordinary Heroes, I know true story, but I didn't look it up. And ha and he gave away most of the movie. You know what? Drunk 3BO needs to be punished for that. I don't know how. Uh, but dis disappointed. Disappointed in, uh, in Drunk 3PO for that. Trying to see if I can find... 
a good clip for drunk 3PO. I can't really find one. So I'll just I was gonna play I was gonna play one and it's really not appropriate. <laughs> okay, so I'll play this one. <laughs> um just not impressed with drunk 3PO right now. Him spoiling movies. How dare he? Um, okay, next story. And this is super cute and just so random. It's just the most random story ever. But I like it because it's just so random. So here it is. French fry party delivered after mystery call goes viral on social media. This is the story. Kids and their love of French fries. For days, they kept calling a barbecue restaurant, but wouldn't say who they were. The story is taking off around the world on social media. <laughs> and as news force Caitlin Ogle shows us, those Oklahoma kids finally got what they wanted. I told them I was going to give them a French fry party at school, and that's what I did. Owner of the Noble Smoke and Joe's BBQ, Summer Williams, making good on her promise. In late February, the restaurant kept getting calls from children with an unusual request. They asked if we had French fries and if we would deliver them. Day after day, the calls just wouldn't stop. So Summer posted on day. Facebook, trying to figure out who was on the other end of the line. I was like, check your kids and see if they're ordering french fries from us. And that's it. And then it just went viral. You could say people from all over the world were mystified, commenting Mr. and wanting Fried. updates. So Summer cooked up a plan to get a lead when they called again. And I was like... I'm going to give a French fry party to your school if I can talk to your mom. She found out <laughs> one of the children attends Catherine I. Daly Elementary. The school helped her figure out the hungry culprits. Three cousins, Miley, Emily, and Linda. The trio says the idea came from the youngest. Not me. She said I had to say she went in French fries. I want some French fries. The school got Summer in touch with the parents. With their identities known, Summer finally delivering the order, giving each one of their classes a French fry party Tuesday. I really love French fries, so that's why I eat them fast. I love French fries. How do you like your French fries? They're so cute. With I am glad. When you tell a child something, you follow through. Linda's teacher, Miss Black, making the class special French fry shirts, while Linda and her mom made French fry friendship bracelets. What do they say? Aww. I don't know. French fry friends. In Noble, Caitlin Noble, Oklahoma's News 4. That's a cute story. Summer has set up a GoFundMe for her new French fry friends, hoping to help them with their futures. We'll have That's a link cute. at KFOR. I mean, it's adorable. And I think that little that little girl, the one that thought of the idea, she's going to be a handful. She's going to be a handful. Uh, yeah, I love the Friends reference. That was really cute. Because I'm a huge fan of Friends. So I was like, that that's adorable. I love that. Uh, Ian So Forth says, I don't need to hear these puns on Friday. <laughs> I love pennies. She's already a handful. Yeah, like she's uh she's going to be a fun one. That's funny. She's uh I want french french fries now. I know. What are your favorite fries? Like I love curly fries. Obviously, as you can tell, I think that that's my favorite fries. Like for a while, it was like sweet potato and like, or like yam fries. I loved yam fries for like the longest time. But then I think the ultimate favorite fry for me is like curly fries. I love curly fries. Ooh. I've never really been a huge fan of onion rings. My husband's love. My husband loves them, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. You know what's so funny though is I love like that. <laughs> you're gonna be like, what the is wrong with you? But I love the bread of onion rings, so I would like just eat the bread and like throw <laughs> the onions. I'd give like, or I'd give the onion part to my husband because he likes onions, but I just eat the bread part. 
when I would when I used to eat a lot of French fries or onion rings. Nomad over on Rumble says garlic, cheese, and fries fresh out of the fryer. Ooh. That's weird. I know. I'm weird. The onion part. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally me. <laughs> the onion rings hold the onion. I was like, can we just have like the crust? <laughs> like with the bread. <laughs> the onion is the whole part. Oh my God. Wait, no, that's not, that's the wrong part. It's the wrong chat. This one. The onion is the whole part. Uh, Look. I just love the outside. That's it. That's, I just, I like the outside. Oh, okay. Free fries. This is his favorite fries. You know, that's, I, I can, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. You know what? He's fine with it because he likes onions. So he's like, whatever. <laughs> Bless your soul. Wow. If you're Southern, I mean, you didn't even say bless your heart. You said bless your soul. I feel hurt. I'm like, oh, God. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I know you're you're probably kidding. I hope. <laughs> Chips, not fries. Okay. That's only for British people like Ian. They eat chips. We eat fries. Do you guys remember when like that minute where like back in, I don't know, like it was like early 2000s or something. And it was like, we're not going to call them French fries anymore. They're going to be call called freedom fries. <laughs> that lasted for like a day. <laughs> Like everybody was like, nah, we're still gonna call it French fries. <laughs> yeah, it was like eight. Yeah, it was like 2001. Like, we're not gonna call it French fries. Nobody, nobody cared. Everybody was like, nah, that's French fries. <laughs> um, all right. Speaking of randomness, speaking of randomness, um, you live in Mexico. Onions are a thing there. Look, I, I like onions. I just don't like onion rings. Also, in Mexico, more than onions, I feel like avocados are a thing and lemon. And oh my God, and cheese. Okay, that's the weirdest thing about Mexico. I'll tell you this. These guys put cheese on everything, including sushi. Like wherever I, whenever I go to have sushi in Mexico, I have to tell them sin queso, which means without cheese. Because most of the rolls have Philadelphia cheese in it. Now in the States and in Canada, there's usually like one roll that will have cheese in it, which is like the Philadelphia roll or whatever, or whatever, because they'll put like Philadelphia cream cheese in it. But it's only one. Here, it's in everything. And I'm like, dude, no, like that's that's not how you eat sushi. You're not supposed to put cheese in a freaking like, you know, salmon roll. Like It's just no, just stop. To stop with cheese. It, it's really gross. I think that that's, I think that's the one that, I think that's the thing that bothers me the most about sushi here. It's just wild. I'm like, what the hell? And they put lemon in everything too. Like lemon in everything. <laughs> it's gross. <clears throat> I don't like it. <clears throat> okay. Next story. And this is weird. 
Um, but also funny and silly. And I was just wondering what you guys think of this name. So I figured I'd share the story with you. <laughs> this is so random. Um, here we go. Mom asks for help after husband struggles with the worst name ever for first child. Um, when it comes to naming a child, parents often find themselves navigating a labyrinth of preference, uh, preferences, traditions, and sometimes downright unusual suggestions. One mother to be recently found herself in a, <laughs> such a predicament when her husband proposed a name that has sparked quite the online debate. In a Reddit post that has since gone viral, the expectant mother shared her dilemma while her husband is set on naming her, their daughter Stuarta. She finds the idea cringeworthy to say the least. This is what she wrote on Reddit. So my husband's 38 male and I'm 36 female are expecting our first child, a bouncing baby girl due, due in a few months. We were both over the moon, but we found out uh, the gender. But now things have gotten complicated, to say the least. See, when we first started talking about names, the boy name was immediately decided. Stuart Jr. after my husband. No problem there. It's a classic name and carries family meaning. But for a girl, things got murky. Ooh, things did get murky. My husband suggests stu suggested Stuarta. No, you're not having a stroke. Apparently, his logic is that since Stuart ends with a T, we can just add an A to make it feminine. No, you can't. No, no you can't. I tried explaining why that doesn't quite work, how it sounds more like a furniture brand than a human name. <laughs> Stuart. Uh, how she'd be endlessly correcting people and explaining its origin. He's adamant, though, it says honors him while giving our daughter a unique name. I've suggested alternatives, feminine names that may be shared with similar sound or, or meaning to Stuart. Uh, names he's mentioned mentioned liking in the past, even just going back to the drawing board entirely, but he's fixated on Stuarta. Now I love my husband dearly, and I understand wanting to honor family, but I can't imagine subjecting our daughter to a lifetime of awkward stares and endless questions about her unusual name. I also worried about potential bullying and the impact that it could have on her self-esteem. So Reddit, I'm asking, uh, am I a jerk for refusing to budge on Stuarta. <laughs> is this, is there any compromise I haven't considered helps <laughs> to be mama out? The online community has resonated strongly with the mother to be with many expressing solidarity with her viewpoint comments flooded in echo echoing her concerns about the potential challenges and social implications of the name Stuarta. Uh, I'm speechless. That's absurd. Normally, I'm for all for compromises in relationship, but dear God, no, don't budge. <laughs> you can't subject your daughter to that, one commenter wrote. Oh, my God, Stuarta, for the love of God, do not give in, another wrote. Some comments offered her helpful advice, but the general consensus was that the name Stuarta is not the best option for a couple's first child. I wonder what you guys think. I'm excited to look at the chat now, having read this article. Um, and see if you guys are into this uh, name. Lime, not lemon. That's that's true. I stand corrected. It was lime that they like the most. Um, how do you guys how do you guys feel about this name? Eudora. Eudora is actually a cute name compared to Stuarta. Stewie would be a dude's name, though. Ian Sofort says, for 15, you totally can just add an A to the end to make it feminine. Flips hair. <laughs> Iana. <laughs> I should have, I, I didn't read that right. Iana Sofort. I, I stand corrected. Yana so forth. Thank you so much for the 15. I mean, you know what? I, I stand corrected. I think um I think uh Stuarta does work. So what would it be what would it be for like Shane then? Shana? 
stool. Wow. Um, let's see. Let's try some other names out. Patrica. Stuarta sounds odd. It does. It does sound odd. No, no, Shane, you're changing it too much. It would be Shana. Not Shauna. I guess Shauna would work. Sheena? Homera? <laughs> you know what's funny is Homera is actually a, a, a name in Persian. A woman's name. I don't like it, but it's a name. Shane equals Shania. Hmm. <laughs> Boosha. <laughs> okay, well, okay, maybe it works with Shane, but it doesn't work with Stuart. Stuarta is not a name. How about just Stephanie? This is Blackout325. I mean, that would be just a, a girl's name. Uh, Nick Skyberg for two says, I don't know. Nika doesn't really work. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nika doesn't really work. It's just like. How about new? Oh, bring it. You got me. You got me. I fell for that. <laughs> Shania. Yeah, Shania Twain. Is that is that Sean? I guess that's a girl's name. Shania would work. Oh, boy. That's hilarious, Nick. Um, speaking of babies, speaking of good, speaking of babies, Dad with triplets conquers Home Depot. I like this video. I thought this was fun. Hold on, let me uh, get a better. View on here. No, no. Which what? Which out? Which out? You know what? We'll just do it like this. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, there's three. <laughs> oh my three gosh, babies. there's three. See, this is why dads get a bad rap. Because we try to do stuff like this. He's great. Oh, he's rocking it he's even got the noisemaker on it try and get it there's no way that's fitting Sir, can I have that? oh this is great to get in the, in the. i don't it's not much bigger i don't know how it's gonna fit in that either He's got a brain. And He's going to use it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I hope his wife doesn't see this, but I have to. This is so funny. There's no way that's fitting. I love that this guy has a brain. He's 
putting the noise maker up. And I do. What are you trying? I got a triplet. Oh, you do? Three babies. It's a three bag. They're three baby boys. He's got carabiners. Oh, I only have two carabiners. I'm probably dang with one. I, don't, I like that you picked up on it, though. That's funny. What is happening? Dude, what the heck? He's hooking it on the thing. I love that this guy is, like, so... This guy's wondering how... Like, I know what to do. <laughs> this is just, like... This is Tetris Maximum 5000. Oh, yeah? I mean, you can tell this guy is, like, so good at Tetris. Dude, I need to get home. I can stop being at this guy. I appreciate the advice. Oh, my gosh. These people are looking at him like, what the heck? <laughs> Everyone's like, uh, what Watching are you doing, bro? It actually worked. It worked. Look at that. Dude, great work. Yeah. He's like, you uh. You got to do it. You got to do it. Guys, like. His wife is going to. This mope has been like taping him the whole time. I mean, get out and help. <laughs> I saw people saying that it's uh, it's fake, but you know, even if it's fake, it was it was fun. It was fun, and it taught you something about you know math and physics that things are possible if you if you figure it out. You like you got to think outside the box. So even if it was fake, there's a lesson there, and I like lessons. Don't give up. That's one of the lessons. Don't give up. There's usually a solution. You might just have to start thinking outside the box a little bit. Right? I think so. How is that fake? Well, I mean, like, people are saying there was no babies in there or, um, you know, whatever. Whatever, whatever reason. That that guy was like filming him for too long. I don't know. But I don't know if it's fake or real. But I thought it had a good lesson either way. Yeah, the internet said it. So must be. Must be fake. <laughs> Nobody trusts anything anymore. Um, this next story is really cute. And um, I mainly, I mean, I, I, I love this story because I think it's really, really adorable. But also, the crow's name is Russell, and it made me think of Russell Hall. But he's not here today. I haven't seen him in the chat. Uh, but it, it made me think of Russell Hall. Wild crow becomes little boy's self-appointed godfather. This is the cutest story. And we're going to watch it from the dodo. Here we go. <laughs> They could spend hours just playing. So cute. Russell is a wild bird. He's not around all the time. But when Otto is outside, he will never leave Otto's side. Aww. When we go inside, he will sit outside the window because he wants Otto to go outside with him. When I pick up Otto from kindergarten, Russell will sit on our roof and make sure that Otto is home. Even though Russell and Otto are really great friends, 
I never leave them unsupervised. Before we got Russell, I didn't know that crows could be affectionate. My boyfriend was out working and this little crow came up to him. He was really thin. In the end of the day, that little crow was still there. We tried to call a wildlife rehabilitator, oh but there wasn't God. any nearby who was able to take him in. So he decided to take him home, nurse him back to health. Once we nursed Russell back to health and he could fly wherever he wanted, he still decided to stay near our house and he visited us every day. That's too cute. Russell and Otto's relationship bloomed over the summer. They this is have next level. a special bond. He gave Otto has headphones. never been scared of Russell. Oh. Russell would only allow Otto to pet him. Oh Whenever I tried, he would leave. If we oh, open up me. our window, he will go and sit on the couch watching TV with Otto. I just think he likes to hang around Otto. Oh. Russell is a big part of our family now. He's here every day. When I take the kids to daycare, he will join me sitting on top so of the cute. car. He's very interested in the baby. The main reason why Russell is so interested in Hedwig is because he has a thing for pacifiers. Oh, he likes some pacifiers. He will stay completely still and then he will strike and steal the pacifier away from Hedwig. See the resemblance to Russell? Russell has a love-hate relationship with the dogs and the cats. He likes to tease them a lot. <laughs> Look how the bird messes with the cat. Living with Russell means there is never a dull moment in our life. He allows us to interact with nature in a way that most people are not able to. We're his flock. That's incredible. That looks, that's incredible. I love that. What a beautiful story. What a beautiful, beautiful story. Ian so forth, uh, who changed his name back to Ian, no longer identifies as Iana. Says there's a call, there's a called Russell, and you think of Russell. Uh, did, is that what I said? Is that is that where my brain is just like at now? Is that what I said? Oh my god, I meant there's a crow called Russell, and I think of Russell Hall. Yeah, because his name was Russell, and the only Russell I know is Russell Hall. So I'm like. It's, um, oh, you know what? Even if you did, it still comes up on StreamYard. That's the funny part. You can't take your messages back once it's sent. <laughs> Russell Crowe, are you not entertained? That's amazing. You know what's so funny is, like, now I'm like, oh, Russell Crowe. Now that you said that, why didn't I think of Russell Crowe? Why did I think of Russell Hall? Oh my God. Uh, how much do you get paid for this? I get paid whatever the people donate. So people like Ian so forth and local hero and anyone who is so kind to super chat or rumble rap, brass monkey, everybody, everybody here, everybody here who's super chatted or gifts memberships or things like that. Um, it's all because of your help. That's how uh, content creators like myself make our money. Um, and it, it, it's my pleasure to do it because I think, I think we all need it in this life. And becoming a member, that's right. Becoming a member of, of the channel. Um, that's how, that's how we get paid. That's how content creation works is the people is you guys, you guys, that's how, that's how we keep the lights running over here.
um, like Dan A right here, gifting five memberships to the chat. Thank you so very much, Dan A. I really appreciate it. Um, Foreign says, ah, oh, I I'm cheap. I just pay in likes. You know what? That also helps because the likes go to the algorithm and then more and like sharing, sharing the content. That's that's a not not that, that that's a cheap way. It's like, you know, some people just can't afford that's that that can't afford it, you know, and, and I totally understand. Times are tough. So that's a really great way to help people that content creators that you like, if you can't afford to donate to their channel, you give them a like, you share uh, their content, you, uh, you know, just leave a comment, leaving, leaving a comment helps so much because it gets the algorithm going. And, uh, and that's how, that's how you can also help uh, your favorite content creators. That's how it works. Uh, Rick Cleary just gifted five memberships to the chat too, man. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are coming through so, like big time today. Thank you. Uh, Boosh, not a problem, man. Please, please. This show is uh, meant to be enjoyed by all. Do not worry about not being able to donate, please. Uh, DL for $1.99 says, I want to wish everyone a happy and safe Easter. That's an incredible super chat right there. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you're celebrating Easter this weekend, uh, definitely have a happy one. Uh, have a very, very happy one, safe one. Do you guys do stuff like that? Like I would, you know, I would love to paint some eggs. I think that would be fun, even though I have no kids. <laughs> but we do that in the Persian celebration too. Like for, for Persian New Year's, we sell, we, we paint eggs. Egg painting is a thing in all of our, um, oh, Boosh says, I've been a member for 18 months. That's almost a year and a half. That is incredible, Boosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, happy Easter to everybody. You guys are such good people. Yeah, you know, I think I have one of the best chats. The, especially this show. This show is is uh, one of the best chats around. Very good people here. Just here to support each other. Uh, and all, uh, all so sorts of good stuff. Um, this dude right here, though, this little dude that I'm going to show you next. You know, I feel like some days we all feel like this little guy right here. <laughs> this is funny. Hang on. Let me let me get it right. OK, here we go. Teddy has had enough. Baby has hilarious reaction to happy birthday song. Here we go. Why is he so over it? Happy birthday. He's not interested. He's just not interested. He's like, I'm I'm over it. Happy birthday. He's so over it. I love this. Um Teddy's had enough. Some of the comments. I feel you, little guy. I feel you. Bro realizes he has to pay taxes and rent in his in this life. Midlife crisis hidden earlier and earlier. <laughs> That's so funny. The midlife crisis thing is great. He finally figured out we should all do wh while we awkwardly wait for them to finish singing. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, so good. That baby was like, just I'm I'm over all of this. One too many shots of milk. Can I just can I just have my toys already? Like I just I don't want to sit here. I'm just I'm not just not interested anymore. He looked grumpers. He just looked over it. He was like, uh, I'm, I'm over this.
<laughs> Rick Larry. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh my God. Um, all right. This was um the clickbait video, which I said I wouldn't watch. So I'm going to leave you the uh link in the chat so you guys can so you guys can watch it. Should be cute. It's about elephants. YouTube music is like popping up for me and being like, try two months free. I'm like, no. I'm a Spotify person. Here, I'm, I'm putting this in the chat. Let's all watch it together without it being on screen. And then we can comment on it. Oh, it's a baby elephant. He's a baby. That's too cute. Baby elephants are so cute. I like when they're trying to figure out their like the little trunks. They're like, <laughs> there's a person in the background. No, wait, that's an elephant. I thought that was a person. Like right here. Oh, wait, you can't see what I'm saying. No, it's it's mama elephant. Oh, mama elephant is so. Majestic and pretty. Oh my gosh. Little tiny. Little tiny being. I wonder how relatively big a baby elephant is. Compared to humans. We can't see. I can't share it, guys. I, I put the link in the thing. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This this was a it's like this this little baby. He's just grazing. It's nothing too special. He's just like, hey, what's up? The little baby. I put the link in the chat so you guys can go watch it. He's cute. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Peacock. Oh no. Shane says, sadly, I don't think pet elephants are allowed in my building. Oh, that's too sad. They should be. It's like that episode of The Simpsons when he had um Stampy. That was a great episode. And Bart Bart got an elephant. No plot development. <laughs> yeah, he was just like wandering around. I was like, is this is this baby elephant gonna do something cool? No, he's just hanging out. That's funny. Well, all right. That is the show for today. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love this show. I always say that. And I really do. So thank you for hanging out with me and bringing some positivity back into my life as well as your own. Uh, I want to, uh, again, wish you guys a happy Easter, uh, happy spring and all that good stuff. Uh, if you're celebrating Easter, happy Easter. Um, and, uh, 
just remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to one another, uh, you know, just acts of kindness, kindness goes a long way. Uh, so try and have hope and, and be good to yourselves. Spike in Madness for $10 says, happy Easter. And you know, that is the cutest little Oh my God, what is that? So tiny. Oh my God, so tiny. Is that a little sloth? It's like a miniature sloth. Why is it so cute? That's my favorite avatar of yours. Uh, so far. Um, happy Easter and, ha and Good Friday. That's right, Patrick. You as well. Be kind. Please rewind. It's true. Um, Spike says, show the elephant video that TD sent you on Twitter. Am I allowed? Is, is, is it one of those... Um, is it one of the ones that I can share? Because those are the ones that I get hit on, man. Because um, uh, that's how I got banned the first time. Mm -mm -mm, let's see. I don't see TD's elephant video. Where are you, TD? Uh, let's see. I don't see it. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. I can't find it right now. Too many notifications. Uh, put a link. What? Did you drop it in here? Uh, let me see. I don't know. I don't see it. I see a weird one that Boo shared. And I don't think I can share that. Uh, if not that, I don't think that's appropriate for this show, Boosh. Um, I don't know. I can't see it. Oh, I'll drop the link in here. Okay. Okie dokie. There it is. All right, let me let me grab that. No, no, no. You're fine, Boosh. It's just like I don't know the video that you shared sounds sounds weird. Um, okay, this doesn't look look like one of the viral viral ones, so we can uh, we can play this. I guess I get nervous about these ones. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh yeah, I saw this one. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god, that that dog, I mean that dog. That that elephant is massive. It's like I mean it's way heavier than a dog. It's, he's an elephant dog. He thinks he's an elephant. I mean he thinks he's a dog. He's an elephant that thinks he's a dog. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. Adult Dora is not safe. See, yeah, I knew it. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to show that on this show, buddy. <laughs> I had a feeling. Uh, again, thank you so much, Spike, for that super chat. Um, okay, I will probably be back later in like a little bit to spread some democracy uh, and probably more of that this weekend as well. So I will see you guys next time. Have infinite hope. And if you can't, it's okay. I'll have it for you. Bye, everyone. Bye.